live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing, the best name in tech conferences. 18,000 women here in Orlando, filling up the uh, Orange County Conference Center. We're excited to be here for our fourth year, and part of the whole program is getting some of the leadership from Anita Borg on to give us an update, and we're really excited to have Elizabeth Ames. She's the SVP of Marketing and Alliances and Programs, but we just think of her as Elizabeth and Anita Borg. So, Elizabeth, great to see you. It's great to be here. Absolutely. We're, we're thrilled to have you here at the celebration. I can't believe it's been four years. I've been telling I so know. many people. There's still so many people that have never been here. I was amazed at the keynote the first day, yeah. there was you know, the call, the house lights went up, how many people, it's their first time, and as big as this conference is, as much as the people that know it love it, there's still a lot of people that have not been exposed to this show. It's absolutely the case. Um, we, we have, every year it seems like more and more sort of first timers, um, which is great, because we love to have them come, but um, we'd love to have them come back. Right. And, um, we, um, but I, I think it's really an expression of how this, uh, issue has become a big issue and that the women are really engaged and excited and they, they want to be a part of it. Right. So um, it's great. Uh, it. The other thing I don't think a lot of people know is there's obviously a lot of recruiting going on. There's a lot of young people here, which is what yeah. I think really gives it its flavor. But we had Workday on. They said they had 140 people here from Workday. I talked to a guy last yeah. night at dinner from Google. I think they had 180 people. And I said to her, do you have any show that you bring that many people to that's not your own show. So the amount of investment that I said was well, it's all young, it's all young, you know, fresh out of school. No, it's all ranges, all ages. So I, again, I think there's a lot going on here that people are just not that exposed to. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So the you know, if you look at our attendance overall, about uh, you know, 70% are in the street. Um, and uh, a lot of those are companies that are bringing their women. And some of them are their younger women who have maybe been in the firm for, you know, in the company for a year or two or three or something like that. But, you know, the place where a lot of women drop out of the industry is more mid-career. Okay. And so I think more and more companies are seeing this as a way to um, help kind of their mid-career women recommit to the field and make those connections um, with the community at large and get a little bit more reinvigorated. Um, so we definitely see companies bringing um, all kinds of women out of their organization and they like to bring a mix so that they have some of their senior women that are sort of mentoring you know, women who are mid-career or women who are more junior and it's just, it gives them a really good mix. And then about 30% of our attendees are uh, academic, we call it academic, but it's primarily students, so undergraduate, graduate, uh, postdoc and research type people and then you know some amount of professors and uh, teaching assistants those types of people yeah and I really think it's the youth that that give this this show its special vibe I mean there's yeah. a lot of great keynotes and some fantastic stories really great global representation yeah. ton of African uh, representation yeah but I do think it's it's the youth it's, it's the youngsters that bring a, a really unique and positive energy that you don't really see at many other conferences yeah and I think part of that is that um, the community at large, you know, women that are in the field, they, they care about the women coming up and they want them to succeed and they want them to have every single opportunity. So everybody's kind of invested in them and, right. and interested in nurturing and, you know, helping them along. Um, so it does create this really, I don't know, positive environment, right? right. I mean, we, we always jokingly say, there's a reason we call it a celebration. Right, yeah, and we don't right. call it's it a, a conference, name. we call it a celebration. <laughs> Everyone's a delicate too, I like that too, they're not attendees. And that's, been, that's come up on a number of interviews too, where when people have reflected back on people that have helped them along the way, yeah. the payback, it's almost like it's been scripted is, okay, now you need to do this to the next person, yeah. really, really pay it forward. And that again is a consistent theme that we've also heard on the keynotes earlier today. Yeah. Um, that it is about paying it forward, which is funny, because sometimes you'll hear kind of a catty woman reputation that 
you know, they, they're trying to keep each other down. You know, th that was kind of a classic, yeah. another hurdle that women had to face in the professional world, yeah. that they weren't, ne you know, they weren't necessarily supporting each other, and that is not the case here no. at all. It's no. very much a supportive environment. No. I mean, we may we may have a self-selection <laughs> bias going on well, there. Well, that's probably, that's okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think there's nothing but support for one another in the community, and everybody recognizes that, uh, that we all have to pull together. Right. right. So interesting times at Anita Borg, the organization that puts on Grace Hopper. Yeah. Change of leadership, we had Brenda on, so yeah. you know, kind of a, a fresh phrase, fresh energy. Telly is, I'm going to see if I can get her a horse tomorrow to ride off into the sunset if yeah. the sun breaks out yeah. here in Orlando. So exciting times, you know, it's time of transition, always a little, you know, kind of mixed mixed feelings, but also, you know, tremendous excitement and, and, and you know, kind of a new chapter, if you will. So, yeah. tell us a little bit about what's going on at Anita Borg and... Yeah, it's an, it's an incredibly exciting time. I mean, uh, first of all, you know, a nod to Telly. Um, she's been at the helm for 15 years. She's seen an incredible amount of growth. Um, she took this on, um, you know, really as a favor to her dear, dear friend and then, uh, you know, took on the mantle upon Anita's death. And um, so she's she's done an amazing job and she's certainly an icon um, within the community overall. Absolutely. So um, I'm, I'm sure you'll hear more from her in the future, but um, it's it's been great. Um, Brenda is a new fresh face. Um, she has accomplished some pretty amazing things uh, with the Chicago Public Schools. Uh, she's really invigorated to step into this space, and um, it's great having her. I mean, I think the thing that you really, hopefully you got from her when she was here is that she is just this incredibly genuine person. She's lived the experience. She can relate to what all of these women have gone right, through. Right, right. And she has this profound commitment to make things different. Um, and just the biggest heart, that you could possibly imagine. Right. So. And a little chip on her shoulder, but she talked about, you know, and, and it's, it's come up time and time again where when people are told they can't do things, yes. for a lot of people, there's no greater motivator than being told you can't do this, you shouldn't do this, you're not qualified. Don't, you know, it, it's so, and, and she said, you know, I've been in positions where I've been told I can't be there. And so to have that little chip on her shoulder, I think is a real driver for, for many folks. It is because, you know, it, it, you know, we recently did a little uh, written piece that hasn't actually gotten published yet, but where we kind of went back and looked at a lot of the language that we're hearing today about like, well, women are not biologically suited to be, you know, programmers or, you know, women aren't this or women aren't that. And we, we did this little, like, let's look back historically and like, when did women get certain rights? And um, one of the things that really stood out for us in looking at that was, you know, women weren't admitted to all of the, you know, premier colleges, Harvard, Yale, and you know, whatever. Right, right. Until the 1960s, right? And, which is kind of shocking when yeah, you think about like it, yesterday, right? Yeah, yesterday, practically. And, um, you know, the language that was used at the time was almost identical to the language that we're hearing today. Women weren't biologically suited for this, and it's really not in their, you know, the right makeup for them, and. You know, and yet today, half the students at those schools are women, right? right? right. And women have earned their way there. Right. So, um, I, I just kind of laughingly say it's like deja vu all over again, right? Like, we've heard all of that. We've heard people tell us, you can't do that, you shouldn't do that, no, you're not welcome, right? And um, I think women are just, they're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna back down. No, well, it's interesting times too, right? Because kind of the classic, gates, you know, the, the distribution gate, the financing yeah. gate, the investment gate to build companies, create companies, They're, they've all been broken down and, and, and kudos or, or serendipitously, computing is the vehicle that's broken down a lot of those traditional barriers, right? You used to be, you couldn't start a new company because you had to get into distribution. You right. couldn't be a writer. There was only like a few newspaper editors that controlled everything. That's all completely changed. And now the ubiquitous distribution, democratization of software, open source, you don't have to raise a bunch of money and buy a bunch of servers. It's so much easier to go out and yeah. affect the world, and there's no easier way to affect the world than writing a great piece of software. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're spot on on that. I mean, there's there's so much more leverage out there for people that want to start something. Right. And, um, you know, let, I believe that will accrue to the advantage of women. And, I, and I think that, um, 
I think you're, I, the, th the thing is, is that I, I always end up saying like women are going to do great things and then I have to stop myself and say they are they doing are great things things. today and <laughs> I mean I think we've seen that already with some of the keynotes right. I mean Fei Fei Lee right like right. I right. mean and yet you hear her story as an immigrant as a you know as a mother as a you know Asian woman you know she's had her challenges and she told her personal story not like with a woe is me, but with a just a clear eye towards the things that she had to right, overcome right, to get where she right. was. And a lot of hard work, right? Just a, a flat lot out lot work. of hard work, including working at the um, dry cleaners while she was going to school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and yet there she is, you know, one of the leaders in that space right. and doing incredible things. And so I think you're starting to hear more and more about those women. I think they've always been there. I think that we just, um, we just don't hear as much about right. them. And so this is an, this venue is such a great opportunity for us to hear more of their stories. Right, and we learned a lot about that last year with the whole Hidden Figures thing yeah. that we that we had on here and as well as the movie and and, and you know and that was again in the 60s, right? So yeah. so we're in, we're in October. It's kind in of the October. end of the year. Yeah. Um, as you look forward to 2018, what are some of your priorities for Anita Borg? I won't put you on the hook to tell us where the where Grace Hopper will be next year. You can tell us if you want. Oh, I saw it posted at Slide Is it posted already? Place. Oh my I goodness. I saw that and I was like, whoa, oh, wow. I didn't know that was in the wild But yet. give us kind of, what, what are your priorities for next year? You know, I know AVI Local's been, you know, a thing that's been growing over time. What are you kind of looking at as you, as you do in your 2018 planning? You know, as, uh, amazing as it is to have 18,000 people here, which just blows our mind, and um, we hope it continues to grow. We also know that no matter how big this conference gets, that not everyone will be able to come here for a variety of reasons. And so, um, building out the local communities and uh, you know making it so that empowering those local communities to have smaller versions of this type of thing and growing this movement. Um, to a bigger scale that really encompasses all the women that are out there because even though people here say well, like, oh, 18,000 women, holy cow, it's like the you know, tip of the iceberg. Right. There are thousands and thousands more women out there. We know there are, right? And so we really want to find a way to reach every single one of them and bring support and connection and inspiration to every single one of them so that they, you know, stay in the field, can achieve their dreams and their highest potential, and um, that that will have an impact on them and on the communities that they live in. So awesome. that's that's really what our focus is. Well, Elizabeth, again, always great to see you. Congratulations on on a phenomenal conference, and thanks for inviting us to be here. We, you uh, know, it's really, honestly, one of our favorite places to be. We love having you here, and I would just end by saying, like, all you people out there, come join us next year. There you go. Come you get to tell them where. Houston, Texas. We'll <laughs> in, be back Houston. in Houston. Good barbecue. Ask me, yeah, I'll tell you where to go. All right, exactly. she's Elizabeth Ames. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from the Grace Hopper celebration of Women in Computing 2017. Thanks for watching.